Well, I mean, that's one thing too. And their and their events are only two hours. It's not four hours like SummerSlam or SummerSlam. Or, I mean, or like uh, Royal Rumble. I mean, is Royal Rumble four hours too? Yes, yeah, seven to uh, whenever. Oh my fucking god! So that's gonna be torture too. I think these four hour pay per views are really killing what Royal Rumble is right now. Just wait till Mania. Well, to see, I mean, I hope they they go back to the like, hours. Mania is gonna be fucking like the whole day. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's one thing. Of course, uh, they have this record of making a six hour event, and then the the, the fans get all you know, they Tired, get frustrated off. and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, here's one thing. Uh, recently, what happened was in mainstream media right now, Ringling Brothers Circus. I don't know if you heard about this. Ringling Brothers Circus went out of business after a hundred and I think 179 years. Their first show was in 1776. Now think about this. If you're gonna bring a kid, five year old, six year old, whatever, seven year old, they have their iPad. They're watching that shit. Everything. Their 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 attention span is low. Do you think they're really gonna sit down and watch a, uh, like a, a performance of these guys, you know, jumping back and forth and having tiger, tigers, you know, doing all this kind of taunting shit Not in front of them for six minutes? Not at all. It's hard to do that, right? Well, it's gonna be hard. Well, so I think these kids are gonna sit there for six hours to watch WrestleMania. Exactly, that's one thing too. So how you know how are people gonna stay? And and that's only a kid. So think about like your general population, like people are our age and everything. If you're staying there for six hours, you're exhausted, you're tired. Are you really gonna watch that whole event like that? Like, is there gonna be any join? Is there gonna be anything yeah, like perfect, one out of that? Perfect example. Last year, I was supposed to close the store I worked for the day of WrestleMania. I managed right. to switch with someone to get an opening shift. Right. You think I was actually gonna watch all six hours after I worked from I don't know nine in, in the morning until. Well, I think like five o'clock, six o'clock at night. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's like Wrestle Kingdom, where Wrestle Kingdom has no time oh, limit. Wrestle, Wrestle Kingdom, I didn't care. Cause I didn't care was, at all. I was willing to watch it. It was three o'clock. And I think morning. that's what it really. Yeah, I think that's what it really comes down to is what value are they pretty much bringing into this? But I think is what they're doing. They're pretty much putting too much value on the build, and they're not putting so much value on what's actually going on in the event. I mean, let's look at the, like, for example, right now with the card for uh, Royal Rumble. TakeOver had four, I think, five, four or five matches, right? Five and matches, now... Three titles, yeah, Royal Rumble. regular. And then, of course, you got Royal Rumble, which has eight matches. And they're saying, it kind this, of, they're saying this Rumble match is supposed to be the longest match in Royal Rumble history. Well, usually Royal Rumble matches, usually at the end, right? It's the main event, right? Usually, unless it's like a big match. I mean, let's well, let's go down the card. Let's see. So, for example, let's say Rich Spawn versus Neville. Neville. They have that for the Cruiserweight title. I think it's Neville's time. You think Neville's going to win? Yeah. Well, what do you think of his whole thing? Like how he's coming to the, you know, he went to the UK tournament and, you know, invaded and all this stuff, face Tommy End. And then, of course, you know, he, he's, he's having this whole heel run and everything. What do you feel about that? To be honest, I like the Neville heel. I like that too. I think it, it kind of suits him. It suits him as a as a good, like it's a good fix because it kind of was corny. To see him be this kind of mixed, you know Mighty Mouse character. It's like, come on, man! Like you know, you can do something much better with this guy, and that makes sense. I'll you know? give you one guess who wanted that Mighty Mouse character. Actually, two people. One is a Beaver. One is a old pervert. Old pervert, yes, yes. And I think we all know who they are, but it's still like, you know, of course, what do you expect from a guy that's trying to be a director and re refuses to call his program what it actually is? And another old guy that just can't stop fucking with, you know, basically can't stop admitting the fact that he's an old ass motherfucker, that he's out of touch, that he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. It's like, you know, what can you do? These guys are stubborn. You really can't tell. We're talking about Vince and Kevin Dunn, by the way, so fuck them both. But anyway, I mean, uh, what about, uh, of course, we have, I mean, moving on. We got the women's match, the women's title match. We got Charlotte Flair versus Bailey. Do you think that the, the streak's going to get broken? You know, my opinion on who I think is going to win? 
Yeah. Do you feel like this streak's going to get broken? My winner of this match. Hey, we want some Bailey. You think Bailey's going to win? Yep. I think it's her time. And then she beats Charlotte after all this build? Yep. Well, I mean, with Charlotte, she's going to build up as this person that's won all the pay-per-view matches. Whenever it's a pay-per-view, she's won. No which doubt. She's always won. An, which will come to an end. I think what's going to happen, Dana Brooke gets involved somehow. Because we haven't seen her for a while now. I hate her. Or Emma. What about Emma Lina? You think she's actually going to have a debut? I feel like they're going to debut, but have her do this with the whole thing with Charlotte Flair. Because it kind of makes sense. Because it's like, okay, I'm here you got Charlotte Flair. Yeah. But it's but, like, I think what's good. But she's also yeah. been premiering for like three months. Yeah, like, it's like, so, okay, you know what I'm saying? Who really knows? It's like saying, yeah, it's like saying, okay, when is, uh, what you call it? Um, when is Zack Ryder going to win a WWE title? Oh, when Emelina debuts. Punk's going to come back before Emelina debuts. Yeah, when, when's Punk going to come back? When Emelina debuts. No, Punk's going to come back before yeah. Or when is uh, The Undertaker going to retire when Emelina debuts? That's pretty much going to be the answer now. That's going to be like a meme now. Uh, Punk, Undertaker's going to retire when his entrance is about to make I think he's not going to be able to make his entrance. If his, if his entrance is about, I'd say, five minutes more with the walker, he's not going to retire. But, I mean, like, if you think about this match with Bailey and Charlotte, if Bailey does win... It's kind of a big thing because it's like they're building Charlotte, and then at the same time, they had Bailey win. It's kind of like a Brock Lesnar kind of thing, but Brock Lesnar beat the Undertaker. Holy shit, she beat the streak! Oh my fucking god! Or it could be going the other way. Maybe Charlotte wins, and then they keep on building that. Okay, it's a pay per view streak. It's a pay per view streak, and then probably at the big event, Bailey wins the title. And then Brock Lesnar comes out and ends the streak. And it ends the streak, right? Right. <laughs> well, we gotta see about that. And then, of course, another match we got. Basically, we got two other Divas matches right here. So we got pretty much the we got Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax, and we got six man tag, which basically is always there. It's total Divas, basically. Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, and Naomi versus Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, and Natalia. What do you think about these two matches right here with Nia Jax and Sasha Banks? Do you think it really needs to be there? I don't think it does, but it probably just needs like, something to kill time. Mm -hmm. And the winner of the match, I think, is the birthday girl. Which, by the way, happy birthday, Sasha. Sasha Banks, yep. I go, so you think, who do you think is going to win? Happy birthday, boss. The boss. I have to return after the birthday. Well, who do you think is going to win this? Do you think the birthday girl is going to win? Yeah. The birthday girl is going to win. I guess Nia Jax? Yeah. It can happen. I mean, it can go, of course, either ways, I think. I think it's like, okay, if Sasha wins, they're probably going to have her face Charlotte Flair again. If they're going to have Nia Jax win? Or Bailey. Probably have her face Bailey. No, I think it's going to be Sasha yeah. versus Bailey. Versus Charlotte. I think we all like to see that. I think everybody want to see that. Sasha versus Billy. They did it before. Yep. Twice. Maybe it can happen. But I think what they should do is turn Sasha a heel. Or maybe Bailey heel. They did it twice in NXT. Both match of the year candidates. Yeah. And star. They were star, star candidate matches. Like, why not, you know? Makes sense. But then what about the Total Divas match? Basically, the match that's really, kind of just... Who really cares? <laughs> Who gives a shit, right? It's like, come on. You got Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, and Naomi versus Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, and Natalia. I feel like it's basically just they're mixing two, three feuds together and just making it like another match just for the fuck of it. Because you got Nikki Bella versus Natalia having their back and forth, basically total divas on screen. That's all it is. Naomi just being there just for the fuck of it. They got Alexa Bliss just being a champ facing off with uh, Becky Lynch as a wrestling feud. And then Mickey James just thrown in there for just for the fuck of it. It's like, come on, you know, they could do a much better job at this. But it's just like, who gives a fuck anymore, right? 
I would really care less who wins, but if I had to pick a team, probably Bliss, James, and Natty. I agree. Actually, actually, I don't give a fuck because I think I know who who had the smart idea of, of booking this match. Oh, can I buy a vowel? Yep. You. No, no, no. It was Eva Marie. I was going to say Kevin Dunn, but close enough. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I see. I see. So that's something there, but you never know. But of course, um, you know, it's a lot of matches happening there too. So we have I mean, well, you, 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 of course, were on the Twitter page, right? Yeah. So what about this whole thing with Cesar and Sheamus versus Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson? Oh, they're going. You think they're going back and forth on Twitter? It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Yeah, it is. Do you think they're going to win the titles and then Bullet Club? I think the club is going to win. Club's going to win. Yeah. It can happen, but I think. Do you think shenanigans are going to happen? I don't think shenanigans are going to be able to happen if there's two referees in a match, right? I don't think so. Or unless they have some kind of thing where they bribe one of the referees. I don't think anything's going to happen. You never know. We never. You never know. But I mean, it's one thing too. It seems like the whole Cesar Sheamus dynamic is kind of coming down because it's kind of like okay, they're competing in the World Rumble that same night. Do you feel like they're going to go head to head and eliminate one another? Yeah. Putting right, so it's possible, but you never know. But before we go to the Royal Rumble match, we got Owens and Roman, AJ Styles versus John Cena. Both championship matches, both with big stipulations that basically help. Well, I say pretty much any those two title matches pretty much give us a good idea of what's going to happen in the Royal Rumble match. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, you can say that. So, I mean, of course, we got SmackDown, AJ Styles versus John Cena. Then after, we got Owens versus Roman Reigns. My pick... What do you think about these two matches? My pick is the champ that runs the camp. I got AJ. So, you think Styles? I got AJ winning. And then, for the Universal, I say Kevin Owens. So, you think they're going to retain? Yeah. Well, I, I heard I think I was at work and I heard one of my like one of my managers, he's who he only watches WWE. So he was telling me he's like, yo, I I didn't get to watch SmackDown this past week, but he was telling me he's like, John Cena sunned AJ Styles. Oh, he went hard. Is that true? He went hard, right? I heard, yeah, it was crazy like crazy. It was like about the poster and whatever. Like AJ's like, Oh, I'm the champ, da da da, this that. You got in the poster, the front of the poster you got Brock, Goldberg and Taker and then Cena on the on the on the very front. And you got me all the way in the back. What the fuck? And then of course, John, John Cena went back and forth, right? It was some shit like that, right? Uh-huh. But, I mean, what basically what was it just trying to cut ass or what happened? Basically, Cena trying to trash talk. Well, I mean, that's one thing. I think this match in particular, everybody's always like, let's go Cena, and then there's AJ Styles. Instead of let's go Cena, Cena sucks. We're still waiting for the heel turn. That's never going to happen. I mean, it's a possibility. Maybe Cena wins and says, fuck all you fans. I did it for me. I just you never know. Rick it can Flair. happen. I just type, yeah, you know, that can happen. You never know. I just tied Ric Flair. Fuck Ric Flair, you know, and then that's it. You know, like opening Pandora's box is kind of like that. If he does win, it's like opening Pandora's box. Shit's going to happen, you know. There's going to be shit going. So you never know. But then what about uh, – Let's see. But then what about Owens and Reigns? So you're saying Owens is going to retain, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, let's look back. Of course, they got this whole thing back and forth. Roman was a champ for the U.S. title. He lost the title to Chris Jericho, which I think was phenomenal. Chris Jericho, congrats to being a Grand Slam champ. Bravo. Um, and then, of course, we got, you know, this whole dynamic with Owens and Jericho trying to, you know, do something. And then basically it's a feud against them. Uh, but then, you know, there's like a whole kind of deal going on there. Of course, you have this whole kind of dynamic going around, but it kind of makes sense to see that, you know? Um, but it's kind of surreal to see that, you know, that this is going on. I mean, on top of the fact... I 
I mean, on top of the fact you got to see that there's a lot going on in this match, a lot of things riding. Of course, the fact that if Roman wins, pretty much we're set for, wouldn't you agree, a shitty WrestleMania? Wouldn't you say? Uh, I mean, you could say probably that if they did have, uh, you know, if they did have Roman win, it seems like there's going to be another change at Fastlane, right? Of course, they got, like, you know, they, there's so many possibilities, of course. You know, they, look, look at the card. They got all the people that are in the Rumble match. It's and surreal, right? Like, it's, you probably haven't seen this card ever. Triple H even said this is the first year the Royal Rumble is unpredictable. That's true. It is. It is actually. And for a fact, it is. Because for years we've been trying to say that, okay, it's predictable. We know what's going to happen. But now it's kind of hard to say. Because every year you could be you would be like, oh, there's a possibility of four people winning this match. So-and-so, yep. so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. This right. year you're like, holy shit, there's like 10 people you could throw into the Well, it's hard to tell, I think. It's hard to tell because look at the card. It's such a star-studded card. It's like, what's going to happen? You never know because it's like, you know, you look at this kind of match and it's like, are they really going to have one person win or another person win? Are they really going to have just one thing happen or, you know, it'd be multiple possibilities? And I think it's really just a point where if it was unpredictable, we'd be kind of going, okay, maybe there are like a top four, four people that we think could be winning this match and could be headlining it. Well, but at this point, it's hard to tell. In your opinion, who do you think the four possible, the final four will be? Honestly, it's hard to tell. I wouldn't be able to find that. I wouldn't be able to tell it out. I mean, if you were to tell, I would say this. Most likely, Brock, Goldberg, I think are definitely in the limelight for sure. They're going to be there for sure. I think also Sami Zayn. I'd say Jericho. Really? Yeah, I think Jericho probably is going to get a shot. I mean, well, here's a rumor, I think. That's what I'm from what I'm hearing. I mean, what, what are you hearing from? I mean, you're, of course, running the, the rumor page, but what are, you, what are you hearing so far? I'm hearing Bray Wyatt. I'm hearing Rand really? Randy Orton. Yes. I'm also hearing, which I actually don't mind, Baron Corbin. That's perfect. And Undertaker. Taker, really? Yep. I want him to get one last run. Well, I think everybody's been hoping for that. Since this is the last, pretty much the last year, they want him to have a title. We also have been hearing that this is the last year for, like, what, five years now? That's right, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, we could officially say that's probably his last year because he said, I think this is what he said. And the last, I think last time he was on, on SmackDown. Well, what's his record right now? Record. I think 23 and 1. I think he wants 25 matches. You never know. It might happen. But, I mean, here's one thing also. It's like, okay, if Taker does win, how much does he have left? Is he going to be able to perform? Is it going to be a situation where it's like Sting getting injured and that's it? Probably just WrestleMania might happen? be his last match. I mean, well, he did say this. He said, I won't let WrestleMania define me. So that kind of is like a teaser of what's going on. You know, it's like, okay, what is he really saying? I mean, but here's one thing too. Yeah, I mean, did you see that last last segment on Raw where this like this past week? I think that ended pretty good. That was probably the best ending that I've ever seen. It kind of got people hyped up. Yeah, you're right. This has been a very good. This is the last good ending in a while. Probably Survivor Series. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it's a perfect way of of uh, hyping the pay per view up too. I mean, I bet people come to me. Yeah, or no, that yeah, like that, like pretty much, yeah. But it's like. Like, if you look at it, nothing really happened. They did it in the most, like, subtle way. At the same time, it got the message across. It's like, holy shit. I got to go home and watch Royal Rumble. I got to buy the network. Or if you miss Royal, right. Royal Rumble, you could catch it on ProWrestlingOpinion.com. That's your right. That's segment right. By segment, you know, segment by segment color commentary by the Nick Lopez. Mm -hmm. 
the Nick Lowe's. By the way, pro wrestling opinion. Check that out. But I mean, it kind of it kind of says it's kind of interesting to say that if you really do have this kind of thing, like basically what happened on Raw, they had this whole kind of deal where Goldberg came out, Taker, uh, basically Goldberg was out making a promo. Of course, he botched his whole promo up, bleeding from the head. And the next thing you know, Brock Lesnar comes out, has his whole deal and everything. And then, of course, who comes out? You're the gong. Everybody goes bonkers, ape shit. Oh, my God, it's the Undertaker. Holy fuck. And then just cut it off. I think that was probably the best ending I've ever seen. That's the most subtle way of ending Raw oh, it, without having any BS on. It was a great ending, but at the same time, I was very pissed off. Why? What were you pissed off for? I wanted to see blows get thrown. I mean, I think they said after that there were blows getting thrown, weren't there? Yeah, Taker beat the fuck out of both of them. <laughs> Which makes sense, of course. Yeah, it has to happen. But then, yeah, just, just throwing it out there, Taker looks in great shape. I gotta say, yeah, I gotta admit, he looked pretty good this this week too. I mean, especially for his age. But then, I mean, like it's like okay, if you know Taker shows up, right? There's gonna be all these new people, you know, Bray Wyatt, you know, Braun Strowman, you know, they got a whole bunch of names there. They got you know Seth Rollins, of course, is out now. Sami Zayn is in the demon, you know, stare downs. Yeah, well, I think what what most people watch for in the Royal Rumble is the stare downs. Wouldn't you agree? Triple H and Bray. Triple H and Bray, classic ones like, you know, Roman and AJ. You know, you had all kinds of classic different showdowns well, and everything. Like well, that. we never really saw the stare down. The only thing we saw was Roman's dumb face. That's right. That's right. I mean, well, here's one thing, too. Whenever that happens, the crowd goes ape shit because they go ape shit because they're like, holy shit. When you see Randy Orton and Triple H locking horns, and it's like, holy shit, they're going to have another match. It makes sense. Well, just but it's like. Out there when AJ debut last year i was like what the fuck i i went ape shit i was like holy fuck this guy actually did show up and i think for that whole week we were kind of speculating saying it's gonna happen it might not happen i was in total that i said it's not gonna happen I, wwe doesn't want that I was kevin doesn't guys, want that i was one of the guys i'm like it's gonna happen i mean well yeah we, we speculated that okay he was in he was around the town right he was around there I think they, he, you know, they I think ROH had their show in Miami. Yep, the night before, right? And it was in Orlando, so yep. Miami and Orlando was like an hour and a half away. Right. So he could just make the drive. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, I think it's one thing. Also, uh, what about surprise appearances? Well, so there's been so many. What have you been hearing about surprise appearances so far? I mean, we talked about in a recent shoot episode that's been going on, but I think things change now, right? I mean, you're probably hearing different things now, right? Well, the big name that has been circulating in the rumor mill officially announced what his future in a company is. The cleaner Kenny Omega has signed a new deal with New Japan Pro Wrestling. He will not be in the 2017 Royal Rumble. That's right. And I think that's kind of a shock to people. It's like, God damn, I hope there is an actual thing that maybe that's a lie. But it's like it's not happening because it's true. I mean, well, he like I said, I think it's true. Wait, what did you, he said it from what the did you just say? You said it's true? It's true. Is it it's damn, damn true? It is indeed. And it is damn true that Kurt Angle will be in the Royal Rumble. Really? That's a fact? It's a proven fact. Proven fact. Well, it's an alternative fact. No, it's a fact of life. It's which damn is a, true. Which is a little cheap shot at uh, Eli Drake from TNA. <laughs> yes, we have, people actually do watch it now. Now that Dixie Carter is out of the company. That's right. That's right. Now it's, you know, of course, that whole thing is going on. But, I mean, it's like, you know, we got to check it out. Do you think any TNA names will show up for for uh, Royal Rumble? Probably not. Specifically, do you see any TNA originals making any appearances, surprise appearances? Well, the only ones I really see are possibly if the only one who might have a shot. It's probably Bobby Roode, but since he's wrestling the night before, I don't think so. 
I feel like there's going to be another name, though. Who, Samoa Joe? Joe, yeah. I think Joe's – like, if you think about it, AJ Styles debuted his, – he made his debut match at the Rumble. What what kind of – like, it would make a really, really good, like, you know, storyline to see, like, if they were to ever make that into fruition, Samoa Joe debuts at the Royal Rumble. And then they're pretty much they can have something going up from there. I think Joe could make a debut. It kind of makes sense because it's like, you know. It's about time. Saw that? Yeah, Vince kind of saw the money in that and was like, okay, we got to go out and have this happen again. And it's like, what better person to make it happen with than Joe? Whoa. Is Joe fighting a uh, takeover? He's not fighting, no. He's not even showing up there. Well, I think he is there, but. There you go. Yeah, so it kind of it kind of raises speculation. Of course, he might be coming through. But then I'm also hearing this, that he's going to, of course, I think we still talked about this before, too. He's going to limit everybody. He's going to make break the record, basically. Which I don't mind. Well, what about, like, think about the sto- the, the stare downs. You have, let's say, Cena and, like, let's say Cena doesn't win that night. He enters himself in the Rumble. And then who comes out? Of course, Joe comes out. And then they have their whole stare down. Imagine how epic that would be. I wouldn't mind it, but I don't want to see Joe get buried. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I I see a less chance of that happening this year. Because I think they learned, like WWE, they learned their lesson. If they see people, like, people are behind somebody, they're not going to automatically bury them. They're going to find the right way to basically put that person out and, like, do it. Like, for example, with AJ Styles. It wasn't, like, some big establishment. It wasn't a big show that eliminated him. It wasn't fucking, uh, you know, it wasn't, like, a big established name that took him out. It wasn't Triple H. It was Kevin Owens that took him out. Perfect solution. Or Jericho. Yeah. Like, Jericho saying that. Jericho didn't even take him out. It was Kevin Owens that took him out. I remember what his exact word was, too. Yeah. Welcome to WWE. Welcome to WWE. Right, right. And it's like, you know, that, that was a perfect way. I think, of course, people were frustrated that he didn't win the Rumble. But they still like to see that, okay, he was there. That's, I think, what people respected was the fact that he was there. He and performed. He, he outlasted 30 minutes. I would say he lasted like 35 minutes, I think it said. Yeah, so it's like, and that's a perfect thing to start off with your career. So, of course, they didn't bury him. That's why I think that, that they really did. If they went an alternative route, meaning like Kevin Dunn's probably way, where Kevin Dunn was kind of like, you know what? We just got to go ahead and bury this guy. Just go and take him out in five minutes. You yeah. know how much of a shit storm that's going to cause? No. That's actually Daniel Bryan in 2016 all over again. He would have got killed. He would have got killed indeed. Yep. Him but it's meaning, like, you know, I think that Him meaning best. Kevin Owens. Not Kevin Owens, Kevin Dunn. Sorry, Kevin. I hope I don't make the list, Jericho. We got, we got, to, we got to make the correction of which Kevin we're talking about. Kevin Dunn. Kevin Dunn, yes, the Bieber fuck one, not the fucking, not the the legend. I call him the legend because he's a fucking legend right now. You mean the guy who like, was only supposed to perform in front of three hundred people? And yeah, the same guy that that uh, supposedly some old fucking four eyed fuck said, oh. He's, he'll never be successful in the wrestling industry. He's not going to be able to do anything. He can't last a match, et cetera, et cetera. First, but now he's a fucking champ. First match on the main roster, like 35,000 people. Take those 350 people that you were saying and shove them up your ass because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's like a dead ass heat. Made it You big. just made the list, Jim Cornette. You just made the fucking list, Jim Cornette. But it's like, you know, what do you – like? So let's talk about, before we wrap it up, let's talk about different kind of scenarios that can happen. Of course, you know, there's so many different possibilities. It's like Royal Rumble can fork into so many different things. So of course, they call it the road to WrestleMania. But, but that road started, started by many forks. That road actually started in November, right after Survivor Series. That's one. But also another thing, different plans happen, and that can cause different forks on the road to WrestleMania. So we're still reaching WrestleMania, but there's different ways of getting there. So, let's make this segment pretty much the fork in the road. That's all it's That's what we'll call it, I guess. And pretty much all it is, that's basically the timer that we got. But uh, before we wrap it up, I guess we'll talk pretty much about just, you know, different alternative paths they can go. So, what do you think? What do you see happening? What do you see is going to be the big storyline that's going to come out of this? For leading up with a plan for WrestleMania. Well, being the fact there's only eight spots left in the Rumble, somehow I see Seth managing to get his way into the Rumble. Triple H coming out and screwing him over, which leads to Seth versus Triple H at WrestleMania, which is a very, very high possibility of that happening. 
I see someone big showing up. Someone by the name of Finn Balor making his de- uh, re-debut since he got injured. I see, like you said, someone breaking Roman's record of single eliminations. Yep. I see Taker getting at least nine eliminations, which will give him the most ever. Mm -hmm. Which I would love to see. Because he only needs nine more to break the record, eight to tie. I see Ty Dillinger coming up. At at number 10, which will make it even better. The perfect 10 at number 10. Right. Uh, I see. Well, what about this? I see the new day breaking um, up. Really? Yes. New day uh, dismantle, dismantling. Yes, I see them breaking up. I don't know why. It can happen. It can happen. I mean, of course, they got the whole thing with Titus. That can happen too. Oh, I, I think... see Kofi doing one of his things to save his ass from getting eliminated. Right. Right. Well, I mean, here's one thing, too. If you really think about this, this can happen, too, of course. Here's an alternative um, path, too, they can go. Sami Zayn is back in the Rumble match. Sami Zayn and Owen had this whole kind of feud in ROH. Basically, everywhere they went, they were, that was probably one of the biggest feuds, the best feuds in all of indie history, all, in indie wrestling history. That basically got ROH their own broadcasting deal with Sinclair Broadcasting. It basically put NXT on the map. They basically build that off the backbone of that, and that's how NXT skyrocketed. So, so why not see, make WrestleMania? Like so you see Sammy winning and feuding with Kevin. It seems like that, yeah. It seems just that way. Or And as a wrestling fan, and an indie wrestling fan, I would not mind that at all, especially at the big, the grandest stage of them all. And I think it's going to be a very smart decision if they do do that. It's kind of unexpected. It's going to be smart, too, because if Vince really does go for that, that means he's actually paying attention for sure. I mean, of course he's paying attention, but that means he's putting all his faith in this because, of course, he's putting it in WrestleMania, his creation. So that's got to say that, you know, maybe he's changing over to another leaf. Maybe he is trying to do something different, which patch off to him. Or but he's then, of course, listening to his son in law. Yeah, or probably he's listening to his son in law and his, his own son, too. You never know. But then there's one thing, too. Here's another possibility, and I'm hearing this a lot, too. Brock somehow gets the title. Goldberg wins the Rumble. And that basically sets up the feud from there. Basically sets up the whole, basically, WrestleMania rematch, put a belt, and then serves his purpose because Goldberg and Lesnar one more time. But, I mean, you got to think about this, too. Here's two other factors to take into account. Whatever happens at the Rumble, there's always going to be some other way they can change the route, too. Well, I'm also hearing... I'm actually hearing this one, which I do not mind at all. Yeah. Either Brandy or Bray winning the Rumble. Mm -hmm. And the other one winning the title at, uh, what is it, Elimination Chamber. Yeah, because, of course, they got the Elimination Chamber coming up in, I think, February or March. Then after that, also, they have the Fastlane pay-per-view. So things can change on the dime. So you never know what's going to happen. I mean, but I'm hearing that, did, of course. Look what they did with um when Punk left. How did they have to switch the friggin' storyline up until WrestleMania? Right, right. It's it's so many things can happen, and it's like you know it's hard to tell exactly what's gonna happen. But if they do something that does happen, they're gonna find a way to divert it. I mean, if you think about this too, they had what was it? Uh. They had this whole thing with Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns. And then the winner got a shot at WrestleMania. Reigns won. Of course, people didn't like that. They said, what the fuck? And it was kind of like, okay, you know, they fucked up with that. They could have done something better. But instead, they totally broke it down and just put it down. And it's kind of like Vince, of course, Vince wants full control. When it comes to WrestleMania, that's his show. However he wants it, that's how he wants it done. If he thinks it's going to make money, he's going to do it. That's how it is. But it's like, you know, at the same time, Look at WrestleMania 32. How much of a flop that was. Here's a question for you. Do you see any 
women wrestlers in the Rumble. Like, remember how they had Beth Phoenix, they had China, they had Karma. Do you see any I feel like women awesome, wrestling coming I feel like in? Awesome Kong's gonna come in. You think so? Yeah, I feel like Awesome Kong's going to come in. Yeah, I feel like Awesome Kong's coming in. Because hmm. he hasn't been in, in the company for a while, right? A uh, couple years. Remember, when she did come in, she got pregnant and left, and then she went back to TNA after she gave birth. And then after that, of course, she left TNA on bad terms. So that kind of opens up room for a return, you know? Why, why not, you know? But then she came back when they inducted Gail came into the Hall of Fame. Yep. And, of course, they have, you know, well, it's back and forth. I know because they got, I think it was a Revy Sky that had beef with her. Yeah. And this is called the fight. And, of course, Dixie Carter got her whole thing with uh, Awesome Kong, too. So it's like, you know, there's so many ways they, you know, they fucked up with that. But then it's like, you know, of course, she's the one talking shit on, you know, on interviews and everything about WWE, too. So, you know, it's hard to tell exactly what's going to happen. But it seems like it, it could it could be possible. They, they might have a woman wrestler come up. Maybe Nia Jax makes an appearance at the Rumble. And maybe Rom, Roman and Nia Jax have a face-to-face. -face. You never know. And I see Nia Jax eliminating. No, Nia Jax is fighting earlier in the show. Yeah. Well, unless he gets frustrated and, I don't know, goes on like a big rage or whatever, something happens, I don't know. But you never know. But then, well, well here's one thing. I think what WWE is lacking it's the Royal Rumble. It's, anything is, it's the Royal Rumble. Anything's possible on Sunday. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, I mean, what, what I think they're lacking is also creativity and what they're trying to do. So they can keep on having the Royal Rumble. They can keep having Hell in a Cell. They can keep having Elimination Chamber. You but know they're what? gonna have to do something. You know, what I just thought about which would be pretty funny. What? Brock and Goldberg both in the match. They're both mm -hmm. in the other ropes. James Ellsworth eliminates them both. Oh my God, that'll be epic! How much heel heat would James Ellsworth get if that happens? That'll be epic, though. Yeah, he, he probably would. I just thought of that right now. It's kind of like how Maven. It's kind of like how Maven eliminated the Undertaker, and Undertaker went bonkers. But remember, Maven never got eliminated. Yeah, Maven not, never got eliminated. He's basically the Curtis Axel of back then. He was Curtis Axel before Curtis Axel was cool. Yep, so, exactly. So Maven has been like, in the Royal Rumble for 16 years. Pretty much, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, and they didn't acknowledge that at all. So it's like, you know, what the fuck? But do you feel like big that's names like, like Cody Rhodes are going to come back? Th that's, or Alberto Del Rio? that's just like who won the 2004 Royal Rumble? No one. We don't know who it is. To be determined. That match never happened. Who was the finals for that? Was that Big Show? It was Big Show and someone. someone. And someone, right? Yeah, I think, you know, we didn't know exactly who it is, but I'm, in my eyes, I think, well, this is WWE probably. In my eyes, Big Show won. So who won WrestleMania 20, the triple threat match? Oh, that was definitely probably, you know, depending on who you want to think, it's probably HBK or uh, Triple H. Because exactly. as far as I know, I'm looking at our network, and you know what I see? I see a big, like just a black figure holding the title, unknown. Who knows what it is? Uh, vacant one. The vacant one, yeah. So vacant, I guess one. How come he's but hopefully the, vacant? How come vacant's yeah. not in the Hall of Fame? He's held the title like 30 times. I know, and it's like and why not have vacant come? Not only that, he's won the Divas title. He's won the women's title. He's won the yep. Intercontinental. He's won the U.S. He's won the tag team titles. He's pretty much a Grand Slam champ. And he's also won titles in other companies while in the WWE. That's right. That's right. That's right. And it's like, why not have this guy come through? Well, do you feel like the, the Bacon's going to come up in the, Royal, in the Royal Rumble and actually be a surprise entrant? And just eliminate everyone? I think everybody hopes to see that. He's going to eliminate 29 guys. Which will, Possibly, and then we have a and then vacant wins the whole thing, which will put him in third place for all time eliminations. That's right. He'll make triple history then. Oh my god! And he might win the and he'll win all the titles in one night. Oh my god! WrestleMania, headline WrestleMania, win all the titles. Then what? So is it vacant versus vacant? I guess vacant. Just vacant. Oh my god! This guy's a legend. It's a freaking legend. God damn. But it's like,
you know, what's going to happen? You never know. Of course, Royal Rumble is unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen. This is us signing out. This is the mastermind right here. And we got the big guy, Rich. All right, fans. Enjoy. Be sure to check us out. Enjoy yeah. Royal Rumble weekend. Be sure to check out the Twitter page. Be sure to check out Facebook, YouTube, Google Plus, and the best website for segment-by-segment coverage of all your favorite shows, including the little independent companies at Pro Wrestling Opinion. Before we go, right. I have before we go, I have one question for you, Sal. Yeah. What time is it? What time? What time is it? It's been a while. Can't find out. Is it plug time? No, we already plugged. It's the other time. It's a tagline time. Well, it's tagline time, right? Right. It's I gotta been, remember that. It's been a while since we've done it's it. Tagline. You gotta set it up. You gotta set it up. And I execute. You got it. That's the tagline? It is. Reading is fundamental. Reading about wrestling puts you over. Indeed, it does. That's PWO, Pro Wrestling Opinion. We got our SoundCloud page. We got all that stuff up. You can check us out on our Facebook pages. And again, you can check out at Arson Podcast, the Twitter page, where you're going to find all your up to, up to date. Rumors and everything like that. Fuck Dave Meltzer. Fuck everybody else. We got this shit on lock. See you guys out. See you guys.